M60 E4 Mod O. Look at that. <laughs> Think any of those are so usable? I don't know. Maybe I'll take them back and see if Walmart will give me my money back. They wouldn't stop 762 by 51 for some reason. All right, we got this bipod down here. Oh, this thing is heavy. All right. Well, there we go. Figured we'd start with a bang, you know? Pretty cool. Okay, so M60. E4, before we get into this thing while this barrel is cooling, I want to, of course, remind you. All right, I'm out of breath from humping that thing. As you can tell, I am not a Navy SEAL like the people who uh, would have carried this into combat, more than likely. I'm out of shape. So, M60 E4, sweet gun. I mean, it's, you know, I, as some of you know that follow me on my Instagram, I, I love the M60. Of course, I bought one, right? So that's should be evidence right there. And this is one of the neatest configurations of it because to me, it's a nice bridge between um, a modern machine gun, but also has kind of a, a classic look, uh, right? Because of the fact that so this is the M60 E4 Mod O. There were two variants of the E4, uh, the Mod O and the Mod 1. And basically the Mod 1 just had rails on it, right? So it it, it, you might actually um, see a, an M60 E4 Mod 1 and think it's an E6, but they're different, right? So um, that's one of the most noticeable things about the E6, which is the latest version of it that's used by Denmark and maybe some other other off the books, you know, um, militaries out there, um, is that it has rails on it, right? So that was one thing that they added for the Mod 1 and that they continued to do for the E6 was you have rails up here to mount lights or whatever and then also on the top cover you had a rail but on the mod O which is what this is you still have the top cover that looks almost basically identical to what you would have seen in Vietnam on the E1 configuration with the only difference being this little bump right here um, which started with the E3 which came about in 1985 and of course, backtracking the E1, you're talking about uh, late 50s, right? Used in Vietnam. That's the that's the M60 most people know. When you think M60, that's that's what you think of the Vietnam M60. And then in the 80s, you've got what's called the E3, uh, which is what I like to call the Rambo 2 gun, uh, because that's probably the most common way people have seen that gun. And then also, um, I forget the character's name, but one of the guys in um, now I'm forgetting the name of the movie. Uh, uh, only the best action movie of all time with Arnold Schwarzenegger in the jungle, Predator. There we go. Uh, one of the guys has an E3 in Predator. And that this, so this little bump right here is, uh, you know, I'm not an engineer, but I know it has to do with how one of the improvements was that you can actually put the top cover down. I'll show you with the bolt forward. It allows you to do that. You could not do that on the E1 and this little bump right here allows for a, a different mechanism up here, which again, I just want to give you some of the basics. I don't know every little detail about this thing. You know, I don't, I don't build M60s. You have to go to uh, Aaron over at beltfez.com for that. You know, he's the guy I got these parts from um, and he is the M60 guru. And he has like this whole series of videos where he like goes in this incredible detail about every little aspect of them. And I always pull up his stuff when I'm trying to figure something out or put something together. So where, the, so where the E4 fits in the family of M60s is it's essentially the, the last variant of the M60 that was adopted by the US, the United States military. Primarily like Special Forces and Navy SEALs would have used these. Uh, I think they were on some Navy ships and, uh, and things like that. Um, so this, so they're not, this variant is really not that prevalent. There's not a lot of movies. Really the only movie I can think of where you see this variant is uh, Tears of the Sun with, with uh, Bruce Willis. If you check that movie out, you'll see this exact gun. It's identical. Um, the only difference is I've got the, uh, uh, so between these two barrels, let's see, actually, no, not that one. So 
Um, this one uh, has the uh, fluted, it's a, it's a heavy fluted barrel, and his does not have that. And it ha he had the duckbill flash hotter, which just has the standard like A2 style flash hotter. But other than that, watch that movie. Same, same exact gun. Okay, let's shoot it some more. I've been talking too much to you guys about this gun. Some of you just want to see it shot. You know, trying to make trying to make everybody happy, trying to shoot this thing and talk about this thing, you know? All right, they got my handy dandy little uh, assault box, as they call it. I know some of you guys are like, hold on, modern sporting box, but well, you know, let's, let's be real here. Right. Snake it in there. Now, you would think, this, this kills me about this thing. So it holds slightly less than 100 rounds, which it's just like, that's, that's when I discovered I had OCD when I loaded this thing the first time. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. It holds like 92 rounds or something crazy like that. These, uh, these belts I just kind of you know, ripped off randomly from a bigger from bigger 250 round belt. So I don't even know exactly what they are, but since it fits, it's probably like, it's probably like 85 rounds or something. Okay, we got this little cover it goes on there, all nice and neat. So we need to close this first, put the safety on. All right, we're ready to go. Let's, uh, let's take out these pots down here, it's this pyramid of pots. I feel like it needs to go. All right. 762 by 51, or as you might know, 308. Fires from an open bolt. All right. A little pot smoking with an M60. All right. Oh, yeah. Like I said, open bolt, and then I forgot to put the bolt back. Very smart. Right. As Dad likes to remind you guys, your IQ goes diminishes slightly when you're on video. All right. Now we're ready to go. Okay. Got maybe a few of these two liters and things. Uh, what they with the slow rate of fire about five six hundred rounds per minute, you can single shot these pretty easily. Orange two liter. This is a green one. Uh, let's go ahead and put a few on the target here. As you can tell, this thing is very loud, uh, which reminds me, uh, don't forget to also support our friends over at uh, Silencer Central. Um, they make it really easy uh, for you guys to buy a suppressor. You know, they deal with all the legal stuff and then ships right to your door. So Silencer Central, make sure you check them out. I need to uh, put a suppressor on this thing sometime. That'd be pretty fun. Imagine it would get very hot very quickly. Okay. Let's uh, let's put some rounds on this ammo box down here. I don't know what kind of ammo that box is for. Are rockets or something? Hopefully, there's no rockets in it. All right. There's no question about it when this thing runs empty and the bolt slams home. It almost knocks you forward. So that's another thing too. There's obviously there's there's uh, kind of two stories to this gun. You've got the military application, and then you of course have the context of it being in civilian hands and the fact that these are not made anymore. The parts are incredibly rare. You know these all these parts were made in the 90s, early 2000s, and you know uh don't exist anymore it's a uh, transferable machine gun which um you know if, if you're not familiar with it kind of a crash course on that is that um in 1934 they uh 
passed a law where you, all machine guns had to be registered among some other things and like short barrel rifles, silencers, all that. And then in 1986, they made it so that um, no, man, no machine guns could be manufactured for civilian transfer after May of 1986. So all that exists for people like me to buy are the guns that were registered prior to that date. So it makes them very rare, very expensive. And then even the parts that are not registered because they're just parts are also rare because they're not made anymore. Um, so one thing you have to uh, keep into account that you wouldn't have if you use this in combat is the so the one of the disadvantages of the M60 is that it does tend to eat parts. It's hard on op rods, uh, bolts, things like that. Which of course in the field, you know, you just replace it when it wears out, not a big deal. But there's a limited number of these things out there now. So one thing um, a lot of uh, M60 owners will do, and I try to do as well, is when you shoot this, put a dummy round on the end. I don't have any out here, but put a dummy round on the end of the belt because that way when the bolt slams home it still lands on a round which you know slows it down and softens the impact and it, and it extends the life of the bolt now for the video entertainment purposes you know i don't i don't want to mess that with that because i want to show you guys you know how this thing really functions and all that but you know just thought i would let you guys in on that little inside baseball for m60 owners so uh, another thing too i want to show you is some of the improvements so talked briefly about that um i mean again the, you know there's like this could be a, a 30 hour video you know to go in depth on all this kind of stuff but kind of some of the major things um going kind of through the years from the e1 so originally the barrels on the e1 had the bipod attached to the barrel right which sucked because you had to have a bipod with each barrel and then you didn't have this handle to grab because the handle was attached right you see this hole right here on top of the trunnion that's where the um, carry handle attaches for the e1 that's and that's still there on that on that trunnion even though this is set up as an e4 but in for the e3 in 85 they changed that and put it on the barrel itself and the bipod is attached to the gas tube so that when the barrel comes off i'll show you right here just flip up this little lever right there got to pull the bolt back first do that All right. Okay. Bolt back. Lever up. All right. Barrel comes off, and you still got your bipod and all that still attached, and you've got something you can hang on to the barrel even when it's super hot. And it's just a lot easier. So I put in this other barrel. It has the older E4 gas system. Slide it right in there down there oh yeah we got a fresh barrel um, so that was an improvement easier to change the barrel and the e3 kind of took care of that from the e3 to the e4 those differences are very minor um, you know this same gas system they use on the e3 uh, slightly different bipod you got these little extra thing on things on the feet that kind of dig into the ground it's a little easier to adjust up and down um, they changed the uh, the care handle where it's canted slightly because on the e3 Someone didn't think think it through all the way, and it obstructs the sight when it's up, right? So this one on the E4 model, you can still fire even with the carry handle up, which is really nice. So you can carry it around and still shoot it and look down your sights. Um, they improved from the E3 to the E4, we're talking 85 to, you know, around mid-90s when the, the E4 started, those started uh, being produced. Um, they increased the surface area right here around the barrel. If you look at, like, watch Rambo 2 or whatever, you notice it's like a thin little strip of plastic. Now, you had the vertical grip, of course, which is where you'd want to grab it, and that's where I grab it on this one. But, man, if you, you know, in the heat of battle or whatever, you could so easily get your thumb up on that barrel and uh, get a serious burn. But they addressed that for the E4. You got, like, a much bigger uh, thing there to grab. And then kind of going back here uh, to the buttstock, um, it's a slightly improved buttstock, you know, just some, some higher grade metals and things like that. Uh, the grip, uh, the pins on the grip, again, it's like I could go into a lot of detail, but I don't want to bore you guys too much. Uh, one improvement that I really like from the E3 to the E4, on the E3, the ammo hanger, which is what this is hanging on, and the um, uh, feed tray right here, which is this, were attached, they're the same piece. 
and so when you pull it up the whole thing comes up and if it's full ammo it's yeah you know, it's kind of a pain so now on the e4 they have it mounted to the actual receiver of the gun so it's independent which is which is nice that's a big improvement right there um they made some improvements in the top cover if you look over here so here's the well, i was talking about the bump earlier remember that way back when um this is an e1 top cover it does not have the bump this is an e3 e1 on the left e3 so again 50s 80s and you look inside you can see this is called the cam lever right there so they made some improvements there and then this right here these are the feed paws and so if you look here you notice these are made out of a higher grade steel some kind of and uh so some kind of steel some some hard and metal and um they uh wear they don't wear out as fast so that's an improvement you get stronger belt pull you know so they made some improvements in the top cover even though they look basically the same so that's kind of you know the basics of the changes and i, I always find it funny when i see e6 videos <coughs> and um you know they talk about all the uh, E6 improvements, and a lot of them are based on what the E1 was. You know, but there's obviously there's some improvements from the E4 up to the E6, but they look they're a lot less dramatic than they make it sound. I mean, the E6 to the E1 is like a, I mean, it's night and day. It's like comparing a Colt single action to a Glock or something. Um, so these these all these changes happen kind of gradually. You know, so. I feel like some maybe some people don't aren't aware of that. There was multiple you know generations in between. So all right, enough enough of that. Let's shoot some more. Uh, one thing I did want to do though is take a couple of kind of um, use the shorter belt here, a couple of single shots over there at the uh, metal plates. Throw this little guy in there. Get that cat out of here. His <laughs> dad's uh, phone ringer. Okay. There we go. All right, I'm going to start out on the circle red plate. I guess they're all circles on the left. Let's try the basically the next one to the right. All right, let's try the one furthest to the right. So, you know, it's not a sniper rifle, but of course it's uh, it's very doable. And, and I, on that one where I've, I've fired two, it's so easy to only fire one that I forgot it was something I had to try to do. <laughs> so it was just uh, literally an accident. I just forgot. Um, all right, let's um, let's see. What else do we have? What do we have left? Oh, we've got that trash can over there. You know what? I'm gonna shoot. I want to shoot that from up here on the table. Let's get a longer belt. Dad set me up a trash can down there full of all kinds of all kinds of nonsense that needs to be sorted out. And I think we've got the perfect sorter for this. Oh, I'll tell you guys this quick story before I shoot it. So I got a friend of mine in the military, and he'd been away for a while. And uh, ever since I had gotten all this stuff or whatever, for years when I would mess with these belts and I wanted to break one off, I would I would do this. I would. Take it like that, and I would just push on that round. Sometimes it'd be really hard, or I'd find something to push it on and pull it out. And I was just shooting with my buddy who's in the military and has experience on machine guns, and he just like grabbed a belt and just went like that. And I was like, what? <laughs> like it, it just completely blew my mind. Like for years it was that easy, and I had no idea. All right. This is something I've noticed that happens sometimes. So this is a double notch 
uh, operating rod, which was an improvement from the E1 to the E3 that they stuck with. And I think the E6 actually has a triple notch, I believe, but sometimes it'll be on the forward one and it won't be, well, that wasn't the issue there. I don't know why the, yeah, it was just, I don't know. It was like in a weird little bind or something. Sometimes that happens. Okay. All right. Crash can. Lights and loaded. Ready to go. Couldn't really see much while I was shooting, but it looks like I took care of it. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go. Look at all that. Look at all those links right there. Oops, did that wrong. The way you're supposed to do it is yeah, you fire it, pull the bolt back all the way. Then you go up, clear it out, make sure it is empty under there. So there you go. M60 E4 Mod O. Again, the Mod O is the one without the rails. The Mod 1 has rails on the top cover and the hand guard. And you'll see them in like different uh, configure. You know, I've seen them where, you know, they've got the, the Mod 1 fore end and the Mod O, you know, top cover and vice versa, and, you know, and all kinds of mix match parts and stuff. Um, but really, really interesting gun, you know, uh, US ordinance to making these. Uh, from, they make the E6s, of course, that they sell to, uh, you know, I, think it, I think it's Denmark, or is it, yeah, unless, sorry if I'm wrong about that, but um, the E6 is the most current form of the M60 that is still in use in the military, and there are some units that I understand still actually use the E4s, and U.S. Ordnance, I believe, still actually manufactures those um, just because they're cheaper and some countries uh, can't afford the E6. I, that's what I've, that's what I've heard, so. Um, but these mottos are definitely not made anymore. Really neat, neat gun. Um, you know, these things are so much fun to shoot, slow rate of fire. Again, I wish I could do a, a you know, three hour video on it. There's so much I could talk about with this thing, but uh, you'll see it again. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with us on the range. It was a lot of fun, and we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for... Many years, it's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.